and they want to work on sustainable development and at the platform of NGOs, not the university, not the government, but they want to do it themselves. Okay? Some become very political, they take an anti-capitalist anti stand because they say sustainable development needs you know, to work politically against capitalism. They blame capitalism for all this damage of the environment. So they group, and then they say, let us group of people that work on indigenous population. I was telling one. Yeah, he had been working for 16 years. This is now the new platform where we want to talk about indigenous people, orang-orang asal. Yeah? They are very sustainable in their way of life because they are still living with their own culture and their own standards. So these are a group of people that are still working on sustainable development. So I want to give you an imagination that everybody now is involved. Not just university, not just the government, but everybody is involved in trying to make what we call a better world. Yeah? A better world means the world that we want. Since we've got, we cannot end poverty in 2015, then we are trying to define what is the future of the world. And people ask, what is the world that you want? And this is where people like us becomes important to tell government, this is the world that we want. Yeah? We don't want just to take a top-down approach, mengatakan, okay, this is your world, no, we don't want. We want to define our own world. And this is why Malaysia Baru is important, because this is the time where we define things. But you need to tip, you need to talk about it. Yeah? Kalau kita diam, ni macam ayam sakit, no point. So university must be very, very uh, vocal, based on your academic work, based on your research, and say, my research in Klantan says this. This is the kind of world that we want. We begin to contribute directly to policy making in the country, if not globally. Right? So because of that, the consultation was done after the MDG, then we end up with another goal called the Sustainable Development Goal. So in a nutshell, this is what sustainable development is all about. We are at a period where we are talking about sustainable development goal, just like the Millennium Development Goal, but here the definitions are slightly different. We will go into that a little bit more. Yeah? So if you look, you look at the RCE, I want to interest you in the RCE, because this is a way to move forward. The structure is not the structure for you to move forward. Yeah? So dulu kita ada a few RCEs, but now as I mentioned to you, the RCE is about 117 around the world. Yeah? And it is recognized by the United Nations University using another, what you call, a, a platform to create intellectual discussion on sustainable development. So this is not a small thing. It's not just about M M M U K U M K so M K is about U M K and the ministry and the world. You need you must connect yourself to the global platform with United Nations uh, being at the center of this. Yeah? Next week, inshallah, we'll be going to Osaka, Okayama to discuss about this further, how to expand it into other uh, activities at the same time, right? Now the definition, therefore, is like this. Yeah. The definition of sustainable development is a development that meets the needs of the present today yeah, without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. So, kalau this time we have got clean air, clean water, yeah, uh, good economy, we must make sure the future generation also have clean air, clean water, if not better, in terms of economy. Alright? So if they are not having that, then you are moving into something which is unsustainable. That's a very simple definition. Apa kita ada hari? Kita ada satu, dua, tiga hari ni. Yeah? Dua generasi daripada sekarang, do we still have those things? If you have, and you have more, then you are sustainable. If you don't have, then it's not sustainable. So, for example, today we have good, clean air. But now, because of global warming, climate change, the air may not be good anymore. Then you are moving into something which is unsustainable. Yeah? The definition is very simple. And you look at your children, whether they understand this. Yeah? Because sometimes their lifestyle is also not sustainable. When you just depend on just uh, your handphone to live, I think it's not sustainable. You, know, you don't interact with society, you don't know how to make conversation with other people, 
you don't look at the kampung as something which you need to contribute to you just want to move into the into into the city yeah and, and have a comfortable life you forget your parents you forget your uh, next of kid these are all things that we need to actually come back to and tell our gen younger generation what is your responsibility to be sustainable in that particular context yeah? so they crafted it very simply if you want to talk about sustainability you must think of three things one is the economy with respect to the environment as i mentioned earlier you can develop economy but you must keep your environment intact you don't destroy the environment right so that at the end of the day the society can also be stabilized Right? If the environment is not stable, just like the water again, if the water is not in good supply, then society becomes very unstable. People will start to fight for water. Yeah? And the war of the future is not about oil, the war of the future is about water. Because everybody needs water. And this I think is important for Muslims. Because we use a lot of water for wudu. Sometimes I see people in wudu like they don't want to Basuh kakinya yeah. Lama pula tu yeah. uh, Situ saja sudah menunjukkan We do not understand what sustainability is all about yeah. Whereas when you go to Mekah You can You go to Mekah You can do a wudu with this 500 meter dah boleh buat wudu 500 millimeter Milliliter dah boleh buat wudu Kadang-kadang kalau terdesak sangat Air zam-zam Satu mangkuk dah boleh buat wudu Tapi di Malaysia ni mesti tiga beldi nak wudu. Because the understanding of sustainability is not good. Yeah? And in Australia baru ni saya pergi di dalam botol ni ada dia tulis uh, reminder to save water dan dia menggunakan hadis Rasulullah SAW di Australia. Dia mengingatkan Australian use water and they use the hadis of the Prophet to remind. We are Muslims, we don't need that. But we need to be reminded how to use water. But Puan Sohaila will know uh, where is she? Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. In some places that we go, there's no water for 42 years. We'll tell about the story later. Yeah. So tempat-tempat macam ini are places which is not sustainable. Our duty is therefore to give them water, to bring water to them if you want to play the sustainable development game. Otherwise, you are not doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So these three things are very important. Ini kadang-kadang di translated for easy memory to three P's. P, uh, economy, kita kata prosperity. Environment, kita kata planet. Society, kita kata people. So the three P. Prosperity, people and planet. Yeah. All these three must merge together. Then you have got sustainable development in the centre. Yeah. If you have good economy, poor, poor environment, and therefore the society will suffer. The balance that can Remember I talked about the balance? Remember I talked about the mizan? It's about how do you balance these three things, right? What is a problem? The problem when we talk about sustainable de development, the problem is the human being. Kalau kita tengok ini, ya, ini dia punya uh, kesan, ya, the impact. Ini kalau tidak ada manusia. Yeah, hanya nature saja. Ini bila ada manusia, you find the impact goes up. I think many studies has indicated why we are not sustainable because we do not have a good habit. Right? A good habit in maintaining. I mean, just to be in it, bila ini saja dah tak sustainable. Reason is very simple. Ada sunlight di luar. Kita pasang tigai. Kita tutup sunlight itu, kita pasang lampu. Cerdik ke tak cerdik? Dan, kalau kita buka tiga ini, kita boleh padam lampu. Right? Kalau kita buka tingkap, kita boleh padam aircon. But we have structured our life in such a way. That we close all this, we switch on the lights, and then we say we are sustainable, we are not sustainable. So kalau kita lihat kampung-kampung dulu, they are not like that. Their windows are very very big. Why? The, the air can come in, the sunlight can come in. And they don't have, they don't have to have fan. Tak payah ada kipas pun. Tak payah ada aircon pun. Aircon ni dah sendiri. Naturally done. 
So this is why I say the lifestyle of the human being is not good and therefore we are responsible. Kita bertanggungjawab atas the unsustainable of our environment. And therefore we need to change our lifestyle. And this is why education becomes an important thing. I think I'm very slow. Yeah? So let me move faster. So if you look at the global scenario, secara umumnya, kita katakan economically we are not stable. Ecologically we are not stable. Socially we are not stable. Yang kaya, yang miskin. The disparity is so huge. Yeah? And because these are all not as stable, then what happens? People begin to fight with one another. Anak kita cukup lah, empat orang. Tiga orang dapat, satu orang tak dapat. Yang satu ni akan mengaruh. Yeah? It's the same logic, it's the same effect. And people start violence because they are not being treated fairly. And the world becomes a mess because of that. Yeah? Countries fighting, people fighting. Sometimes between two Muslims they are fighting. Saudi Arabia is fighting Yemen. Sampai orang Yemen sekarang ni don't know where to go. Yeah? So the world is in balance and that's why sustainable development is very important. Now, how in balance? Yeah. How in balance? Jurang ni macam mana? Ini statistik 2015 mengatakan 80 orang 80 people saja, Bukan 80% 80 people 80 lebih kurang banyak ni lah Richest people have the same wealth with 3.5 billion poorest people in the world 80 orang mempunyai kekayaan sama dengan 3.5 bilion orang di seluruh dunia. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? 8 orang berbanding dengan 3.5 bilion. Ini tahun 2015 ya. 8 orang tu boleh masuk satu bas ya. Satu bas 80 cukup ni. Right? Menunjukkan sikitnya. Tapi tahun berikutnya 80 tu dah tukar pada 62. Lagi kurang. Kalau dulu kita nak, boleh naik bas, kang ni kita 2, 2, 2, 2, 20, 17, turang pada 8 orang. 8 orang mempunyai kekayaan bersamaan dengan 3.5 bilion orang dalam dunia. Kalau dulu naik bas, kang ni naik van. 8 orang. Van, uh, bas is too big. Dan tahun ini, kita mengagak, uh, you can see, yeah? dia punya mudulu naik kapal terbang, naik bas, naik bas, naik van lepas tu tahun ini agaknya naik becal tiga orang yeah. this is a state of disparity when you talk about poverty this is a state of disparity yang kaya bertambah kaya, yang miskin bertambah miskin di Malaysia pun tidak ada beza yeah. lepas itu, the research on poverty, the research on sustainability the research on orang, orang asli is very important because they are the one that are the poorest at the moment in time kerja kita, macam macam mana kita nak menyelesaikan. Kalau kita ambil Asia, misalnya, kita dapati Asia yang paling teruk, kerana 60% daripada population of the world are in the Asia. And the two biggest country, China, India, are in Asia. Yeah? And therefore, Asia has got a very important role to play in trying to advocate sustainable development. Is another graph to show Last year, 2017, we already finished all our resources, the budget that is given by August 2nd. Ini macam kita buat universiti juga lah, bagi budget. Tapi sebelum hujung tahun, budget dah habis. Yeah? Bila budget dah habis, kena pakai budget tahun depan. Kita dah boleh mencuri tahun depan. Remember the definition? You want to find that the future generation also have what we got. But we already using the peruntukan. Yeah? Peruntukan tahun depan kita dah pakai for the future generation. So we are already unsustainable. But this is not something which is new. Because kalau kita tengok the statistics, pada tahun 1977, kita pun tak cukup duit, tapi kita ada overdraft 60 hari je. Tapi semakin lama, one year after the other, one year after the other, one year after the other, it gets worse. Mananya, we have not learned how to control our resources for the future. And this year, mungkin agaknya is going to be worse. Yeah, you know, always find this out by the end of the year. They say, what is the overshoot day? We thought that 2018 will be even 
worse than 2017. All this is to demonstrate again that we human beings are not able to control our way of life and how to be sustainable. That is, and that's why education is very important. You need to educate, in fact, you need to re-educate people so that they know what sustainable development is all about. It's not about getting rich. Yeah? It's not about getting rich. It's not about be becoming a millionaire. It's not become um, all the things that we have talked about. I'll just keep this. I think it's too uh, too, too too difficult to, to explain now because time tak cukup. Professor David O mengatakan bahawa apa masalah yang ada sekarang ni, whatever problems we've got on sustainable development, dia kata, it's worth noting that this is not the work of ignorant people. But rather it is largely the result of work by people with BAs, BSCs, LLBs, MBA and PhDs. Kalau universiti mana? Seluruh universiti lah. Ya, tidak ada orang universiti yang tidak ada. Why does he say so? Because it means the education system, the kind of curriculum, the kind of program that we are teaching our students are not relevant to sustainable development. Yeah? And that is why it is important to re-educate people on what sustainable development is all about. Right? We call this, yeah, kita ada satu lagi modul, kita katakan education with the heart. Macam mana kita nak meletakkan roh balik dalam pendidikan. I think some of you have attended our courses. Yeah? Now we're talking about just skill set. What you can do with your hand. Only what you do with your mind. What you do with your heart, we don't care. Yeah? So banyak aktiviti-aktiviti yang kita senggaralkan, kesudahannya gagal, kerana tidak ada... The kalbu part is not in place. Yeah? People will take this nak jadi kaya. Kalau orang kampung lah kata ni, semua nak jadi kaya kan. Dulu tak ada Mercedes Benz, sekarang nak beli Mercedes Benz. Bukan nak menye, menye, menyamaratakan kedudukan di bandar, uh, di, di luar bandar, tapi nak menjadi orang kaya. That is a purpose sometimes, make sustainable development a very difficult goal to arrive at. Yeah? So now we are 30 years, 1987, Now, in 2018, about 30 years has passed. We need to talk about what is sustainable development in our context. Bagi kita di Kelantan, di Malaysia, di Asia, apa dia? Right? What is so special about sustainable development? And this is where I think we need to look at the old game. We need definasi dulu. Yeah? Definasi dulu, oh, Putin, uh, Obama dengan ni, uh, Z. Dia main lah. Dia, dia are the one who set the rules. Yeah, but now the game is new. Orang ni lain, kongkong ni orang ni lain. Yeah, you can see I'm both blonde. And he's redefining what sustainable development is all about. Yeah, redefining for what? For America first. It's no longer about the global situation, and this is an issue. I think that we need to start thinking. Do you want to follow America first, or Europe first, or China first, or do you want to think about what Malaysia and Malaysians are all about? That is the issue when you talk about when you talk about sejahtera, insyaAllah. Yeah? What we understand now, as we develop, we find that we are using more energy, although we have more knowledge and more people, but we are not creating the kind of sustainability that we want. Yeah? And therefore, we need to reconsider what is it that you are doing at the moment in time. Another example in Malaysia saja, kadar inflasi 1973 so much, 2013 is six times more. Yeah, untuk kereta, untuk rumah so much is seven times more. Yeah, gaji hanya tiga kali ganda naik. Rumah naik dua kali ganda, kereta, eh, dua kali ganda, kereta naik dua kali ganda, gaji naik satu kali ganda pun tak ada. Macam mana nak beli benda ni? In other words, the society is not sustainable. And the question of poverty, the question of inequality, masih banyak yang perlu kita selesaikan. Yeah? Despite that, ini. Ya? Yeah? Kalau kita pergi ke pasar, ke pasar uh, mana-manalah supermarket, 
Banyak benda ni Tapi kita tak guna pun semua ni yeah. Why there so much of this in the market? Air botol ni saja Benda ni air je Tapi brand ni beratus Why? Yeah. This is what we call this mass consumerism Kita terpaksa you know, berbelanja kerana advertisement I want to make a very good case for hijab Masa mak saya tu pakai selendang je yeah. Pakai tudung je Sekarang ni panggilnya pun selendang dan tudung Sekarang ni selendang dan tudung tak pakai dah Kita pakai hijab Bukan perkataan Melayu pun Ya yeah. Tak apalah, kata Arab hijab juga lah Tapi ada kawan saya mengatakan kepada saya Hijabnya saja, tansi saya hijab saja je Yang saya pakai ni satu ribu raja ya? Kawan lelaki saya sebelah saya Mengatakan nasib isi saya tak berhijab Dia kata dia tidak mampu membeli hijab satu ribu Satu ribu pakai satu hari Tujuh, tujuh hari, tujuh ribu Takkan pakai satu hijab sebulan itu saja Orang perempuan ni nak tukar Embek merah, hijab merah Embek biru, hijab biru nah, Kalau dah seribu hijab ni Apa benda yang kita jual ni? Eh? Nah, ini dia yang dikatakan consumerism Benda yang dijadikan oleh Tuhan Dan Tuhan mengatakan kita pakai hijab tu Supaya kita merendah diri Supaya kita tidak menonjol dalam masyarakat Lelaki perempuan samalah Ya, lelaki dengan topi topi piah ni yang ada best tepi ni. Ya. Uh, best tepi ni dia ada jalan gitu je ni ya. Benda yang ditutup kita merendah diri tapi sekarang ni sudah menjadi satu benda yang membanggakan diri. Ha uh, ini dikatakan hijab tadi. We have moved away from what it should be. Hijab dah tak sustainable bagi saya. Ya. Ha, sekarang ni orang menjadi million eh, Kerana menjual hijab Saya tak tahu di mana kedudukan These are issues Ini soal-soal nilai That is important for us to think about Don't just simply follow yeah? Juki Firaza ada hijab baru RM3,000 Forget about it I can buy this hijab for RM3 yeah? ha, Tapi kita terpesona oleh benda-benda macam ini Kerana dikatakan mass consumer Sustainable development make you think again. What is it that you want? Ya, yeah? bukan mengikut orang membabi buta saja atau membuta tulis saja. Kesudahannya semuanya buang. Ha, saya bila sustainable jadi sebab tu kadang-kadang saya tak pergi dinner. Bukan 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 tak mau pergi dinner. Kita cakap pasal sustainable tapi dalam dinner kita pembaziran banyak. Malam tadi tak tahu berapa, saya datang lambat Tapi saya boleh tengok lah Datang meja tu banyak benda yang kita hidang Tak dimakan Itu tak sustainable Pasal apa kita bercakap tentang sustainable Why you need to talk about sustainable When you waste your food Malaysian waste their food Equivalent to one Petronas tower every year Pulau Pinang saja last year waste their food equivalent to four jumbo jets. Yeah? So we talk about sustainable development, but we are not practicing sustainable. And therefore we waste a lot of food. Yeah? Sedangkan orang yang di luar tu yang tak makan, yang di Sudan, yang di Syria, yang di Afghanistan, yang di tempat-tempat lain, we have no food. They are clamoring for food. Here we just throw the food away as though it doesn't matter. Talk about future generation, we are not living the definition of sustainable development in that particular context. So what next? Yeah? If our life will not change, if our style will not change, if sustainable development will not change, then we are going to go into a whirlpool. Yeah? That everybody will get affected whether whether we like it or not. Right? So there are three things that we can do very quickly. Yeah? The world that we want. We need to define now what world do we want. Alright? And therefore the context of sustainable development becomes, becomes important. We need to change the narrative. Cerita from the Millennium Development Goal tadi. 
to what I call the Sustainable Development Goal through education. Therefore, UMK must see whether the education is sustainable. All right? The concept of sustainable pakai terputika. And these are issues I think they will discuss in greater details. Yeah? And that is now defined by the Sustainable Development Goal replacing yeah, the Millennium Development Goal as it is. That is a Sustainable Development Goal. There are the 17. Right? And these 17 are all interconnected. They are not on their own. In other words, if you talk about education, you must find out how education solves the problem of poverty. If you have education, you must find out how the problem will solve the problem of hunger. Itu senang. Jangan membazir. Tapi susah. Nak mengapanya, nak mengamalkannya. Alright? Bagaimana dia boleh menyelesaikan masalah gender equity? How does it solve the problem of water, particularly your case? You know, you are, you are staying by the water. How do you solve that problem? So, you give education and your water is still the team, and your education is not sustainable. How do you solve the problem of peace and harmony? All this has got a little relevance when you talk about sustainable development. Maybe not all, but at certain time, certain goals need to be taken together as and consequence of good education. Yeah? And this is what we call the 20 Apani, the, Apani, the, the Sustainable Development Goal by, by, uh, by uh, United Nations post-2015. After 2015, when the Millennium Development Goal ends, then we take it to Sustainable Development Goal. And it has six overarching targets. They want to talk about human dignity, Memaruah, memberi maruah orang balik Maknanya orang miskin jangan kita hina yeah? Because they are unsustainable Don't look down on poor people And don't look up on rich people Because they may be corrupted So where is the dignity? Prosperity must be equitable We don't want to be very extreme We cannot have equal, definitely That would be impossible Yeah but the, 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 the variant must be within certain limits. It cannot be B40 or B80 and 10, 10 rich people, no. Or 8 rich people compared to 3.5 billion, no. It doesn't work that way. Right? It, therefore, it must have justice, Ka'adilan. Yeah? Ka'adilan to make sure that everybody is entitled to what they've got. Because they are also human beings with dignity. And that's where we talk about partnership. Which is a good thing, Yayasan Sejahtera and UMK and all the other NGOs come and work together because no one can solve the problem alone. We need to talk to other people to solve this problem. And that's about people and about planet. Because Sudahanya is about saving people, it's about saving the planet. You cannot save the people without saving the planet because we don't know where else to go. And we you don't, no point just saving the planet but killing all the people. And this was sometimes the Western punya idea. Yeah? Save the planet, but don't care about the people. And this is a thing where we need to redefine really what sustainable development in the context of our own. Right? So give an example with education. If you want to solve the problem of consumption, you need to solve all these problems also. Then education becomes important in that particular aspect. Bukan education untuk cek kerja Lepas tu cek kerja after that You don't know what else to do You then pollute the environment That is not what sustainable education is all about Second point is here the definition Dia katanya uh, About the present Without compromising the future okay? Then the question we ask What about the past? Datuk nenek moyang kita Our great grandfathers What about them? Are they sustainable? then we begin to understand that they are more sustainable than us. Yeah? During our forefathers' time, there's no climate change, there's no pollution, there's no imbalance in the way we see it today. In other words, they must be living something that is right that we are not following through. And therefore, we ask, what is the past? Example, yeah? 70 years ago, there's a place called uh, Uppsala, I think, in somewhere in Argentina. Penuh dengan snow. But 70 years later, 
all the snow has melted. Yeah? So we means to say that this is more sustainable than this one because this one with global warming, all this will melt and you will find no more snow. In other words, how do you go back to the value system? We cannot back, get back the snow because it's impossible. But the value system of how they maintain the snow is something that we want to find out. Yeah? And therefore the value, so al nilai menjadi penting dalam sustainable development in this particular context. We went to Bali. Same lecture. This is Bali in the 1970s. Tengok dia punya, apa tu, pantai, very clean. This is Bali when you were there. Punya koto. In other words, these people know how to keep the environment clean. These people do not know. Particularly people who work in the tourist sector. Yeah? So where do we begin? How do you begin to see and clear up some of these issues? Yeah? So we go back and look at the lost past. The lost past, mananya, there are certain <coughs> things that we have forgotten. What I call social justice or social injustice. Yeah? Yang kita dah buat tapi kita dah lupa. And kita now wants to bring this back. And this is where indigenous knowledge becomes important. That's why UNESCO now is interested in working with the Aborigines, with the Orang Asli, because they still have got the knowledge. Yeah? I was in the Amazon to give you an example. Amazon is humid like Malaysia. I made a comment, I said, it's very humid today. Simple comment. Eh? Macam kita panas lagi ni. I just made a comment. And the reply that I got from the Amazonian was this. Let me call the wind. You know why? Macam mana pula dia call the wind? Dekat Malaysia kita call the wind juga lah. Tapi kita pasang Swiss. Yeah. Hanya suddenly wind dia datang. Yeah? Atau aircon-nya. Tapi dalam dalam hutan, what is it to call the wind? There's no Swiss. But within two or three minutes after he said, let me call the wind, we can see the down-down bergoyang. You can see the draft coming through. Yeah? So I asked him, how do you do this? They said, these are knowledge that I got from my great, great, great grandfather. Manani, at one time you are associated with the, with the environment very closely. Yeah? I'm sure that knowledge is also available. And that is the knowledge of the past. How do you learn this? If everybody can call the wind, tak payah ikon lah. Tiga orang panggil wind di sugo. Senang hidup kita. Macam bomo hujan. Pandai cangga hujan. Tapi kena balik suara dalam atas atas. Atas atas rumah lah. Kacau lah. So, these are issues that we need to think about. How do you go back to the natural state of being rather than trying to be what we are, we are being today. Yeah? Uh, so if you see this, uh, this is a very interesting. Countries yang besar-besar, America, uh, Europe, yeah? they are good in terms of human development index. Mananya in terms of development, they are high. But they use so much of resources. US saja use the resources of five planets. Kita ada satu planet. Tapi US saja use resources of five planets. That's why everybody wants to be an American. I can be an American, they give me five planets, I can make Kelantan better than America. First thing I do is clean the river. Yeah? If you want to be like the European, you must have the resources of three planets. And that's where the imbalance is. The developed countries have taken so much of resources from the developed and the developing countries and they become prosperous. Super lah kalau kita ambil society kita. Segelompok company menjadi kaya. Kerana apa? Kerana dia mengambil harta dan hak orang lain menjadi kaya. Bukan dia kaya kerana dia kuat. Yeah. These are issues that I think we need to think about. How do you neutralize this distribution of wealth? And that's the issue that we are talking about. Dia kata, if you want to be sustainable in development, you must live in this quadrant. It is called the Sustainable Development Quadrant. The only country is in, the, in this quadrant is Cuba. Cuba. Development index is very high. You go to Cuba, there's no diseases, there's no major diseases. Yeah? But their lifestyle are very standard. The rest are outside. So how everybody must move into this quadrant is the issue. Money yang dah banyak, kena turun. Money yang tak cukup, kena pergi. And that is the kind of solution that they're advocating in sustainable development. Yeah? 
The origin of the concepts of sustainable development by going far back into history and to trace its roots. And this is where the word sejahtera comes in. At least now, yeah, yes, sejahtera. Tahu aku mana sejahtera. Yeah? Pakai je tak tahu mana, tak cikgu. Yesterday was a balance. We coexist, as I mentioned to you, between earth and human beings. We can live together. Yeah? There's no problem. But today is like this. The human being thinks they are better than everybody else. And human being is lucky. Yeah? The bosses are all men. And they think they are so great. Yeah? And this is what we call anthropocentrism. Maknanya, kita mengagungkan diri kita sendiri. Kita riak atas diri kita sendiri. Human being standing above and outside nature. Nature tak perlu ni. We can trample on nature because we think we are better than everybody else. Right? And therefore, we create an imbalance. Walaupun species manusia ini is small compared to all the animals, all the insects, everything else add together, human beings are small species. But yet, human beings use so much of resources. Sehingga kadang-kadang gajah masuk, masuk, apa ni, masuk pekan. Pasal dia tak, dia tak tahu mana tak pergi dah. Hutan dia semua dari kita terbang. Yeah, MMU bau-bau ni. Babi hutan masuk live beli dia. <laughs> The wild boy does not know where, no, doesn't know where to go. To go to the library. Probably wants to be a professor. Doesn't matter. Yeah? Uh, in U U N like that also. They find they you know the the the. the, the I do remember one time they find tigers sprawling in the campus. We have taken their habitat. We have dominated their habitat, and they don't know where to go. And these are issues about sustainable development. Yeah. So we want to take that the human dominance must be taken out. In other words, we know our place as human beings in the context of nature and how do we live in a balance with nature. So tomorrow, we want to go back to this balance. Yeah? And this balance is about enhancing that relationship so that at the end of the day, the human being is just one part. When a human being is there. Yeah? And they're just together with everybody else. No special places, no special consideration because they are part and parcel of nature in that particular sense. Yeah? Let me go very quickly to that. So it is not balanced. The world today, as I've mentioned, is not balanced and you can see this. Orang tak cukup makan. Sebab tu kadang-kadang bila kita makan dekat dekat restoran, yeah? ada makcik datang uh, jual tisu. Bagilah singgit. Kadang-kadang bila makcik datang, dia minta sibuk makan dia. Seringgit tu nak keluar, bukan susah. Dia, dia makan itu RM8. Ya? Bagilah seringgit. Ini hak dia. Dalam rezeki kita ada hak orang. Bagilah hak orang. Supaya Tuhan bagi kita banyak rezeki lagi. Ya? Air tak cukup. Kalau ada air pun tak boleh guna. Ya? Kesudahannya apa? Kesudahannya hidup ni melarat. Ha, ini sudah kita jadikan. Bila dah melarat, dia jadi macam ni. Ini statistik di Pulau Pinang baru ni. The statistic in Penang, just two weeks ago, 20% of the students in Penang are experiencing depression. Pergi sekolah, dapat muka murungan. Sekolah apa ni? Dan yeah. 6% attempted suicide. Why? Because of this. Ini pun kadang-kadang kerana apa? Kerana tengok TV, kerana main benda ni, kerana dengar. Ini all this technology business are creating depression. And therefore, we are in a state of imbalance. Yeah? And how do you balance it? If you don't balance it, then we are going into crisis. Definitely. Yeah? Definitely kalau dah mula orang dah murung, bunuh diri. Bukan saja bunuh diri, bunuh orang lain pula. And you listen to the news, yeah? Uh, isteri, uh, suami uh, penggal kepala isteri uh, anak bunuh mak, buang dalam uh, apa air kumbah I've never heard of this story when I was young now my children are listening to this as though there is something with the usual yeah? bully, sexual harassment all these are signal that the society is no longer sustainable and there is no 
joke. Eh? And it's not an easy uh, matter. Therefore, we go back to our education system. And the education system must make us a human being. Menginsankan manusia balik melalui proses pendidikan. That is what we are missing. And this is where we go back to the concept of sejahtera. Yeah? In any education system, you must have at least this four. The inte intellectual aspect, the physical aspect, the emotional aspect, and the spiritual aspect. Because that makes human being. I'm not only physical, but I'm also emotional and spiritual at the same time. I'm also intellectual. Yeah? Sometimes we forgot that we are only think you're only physical. It means tapaya. Then you become either a robot or animal. Two choice. Yeah? At the point we got only this and that, then we do not. Then you become an intellectual, educated intellectual, but you're highly corrupted. This is what David Ogden. Yeah? The problem we cause the problem. And if you look at the corruption cases in Malaysia, these are all by educated people. Bukan orang kampung, bukan masih yang minta cisu paper tadi. It's all people with education, sometimes high education, sometimes they're ministers, sometimes they're prime ministers. Where have we gone wrong? That is the issues that we talk about. Okay? So kita nak balancekan ini, we need to have at least five elements of life, intellectual, lineage, wealth and also faith. Okay? Kita mengatakan pendidikan, education is about promoting life, promoting intellectual uh, apa ni, uh, capacity, prom promoting lineage, yeah, keturunan, promoting ke wealth, we say wealth is important, also promoting faith, adi. Yeah? And that is what balance is all about. How do you balance all this? Macam mana kita imbangi semua ni? Kita tak mau ini bagus, ini, ini tak bagus, ini bagus, ini tak bagus no. How do you keep in a state of balance And not only in the individual But also around the world And this is what sejahtera is all about Sejahtera maksudnya adalah mengimbangi kelima-lima ini Supaya ini juga terimbang sekali yeah? Nyawa, akal, keturunan, harta dan juga adil Eh, orang Islam berpandang ni dan melihat ini adalah makasih asyar. Dan ini yang dikatakan sejahtera. Yeah? Kita bercakap tentang sejahtera ni kadang-kadang kita tak tahu ke mana. Salam sejahtera tiada kali. Salam sejahtera. Uh, penyanyi lagu sejahtera Malaysia. Dekat Kelantan ni kalau pasal Katijah ada apa? Tanda sejahtera. Yeah? Eh, masuklah tanda tak sejahtera pun balik pergi kepala. <laughs> Pasal ini tu, ini semua tak seimbang eh? ha, Ini dia We talk about sejahtera, we are talking about how do you balance this eh? And not balance this only for yourself But for your own environment The total environment must be balanced Promoting of life Kalau misalnya kita buat sesuatu Dan dia tidak mendukung kehidupan Then it's not sustainable Ya yeah? Kalau kita buat sesuatu, dia kesudahnya uh, tidak mendukung pemikiran. Kita buat sesuatu, dia songsang dengan pemikiran. Itu bukan sesuatu. Yeah. Kalau kita buat satu projek, yang kesudahnya airnya kuang. Then that program is not sustainable. Part of wealth. Yeah. Kalau kita buat satu projek, dia me, apa ni, mengancam keturunan masa hadapan. Then it's not sustainable. The case of Suang Punggol is very clear. Yeah. Kita buat satu projek, Seluruh masyarakat di detention. Ah, ini sangat sustainable. So, dia tidak sejahtera. On that. that is the understanding of sejahtera. So, I want to talk about this soalan tengok. Sejahtera. Yayasan sejahtera. Jadi, bila kita bercakap tentang sejahtera, itu dia rumahnya. Very, very well. Yeah. Tapi, dia mesti dilandasi oleh life. That is important. Protection of life is protection. So, maknanya kalau kita buat sejahtera dan kita potong kepala orang, itu bukan lagi Islam. Bukan lagi makasih. Kita buat sesuatu, dia memakmurkan orang, then that is sejahtera, that is sustainable. Yeah. Tapi bukan saja life, tetapi dia juga dinaungi oleh akal. So, kita berfikir mencari solution yang sebaik-baiknya supaya dia mendukung hidup. 
And that's why the thinking process must be thorough. You cannot just donate a machine and then you walk away and then the machine becomes attention. You have not thought it through. Yeah? And because of that, then kita boleh jamin bahawa masa hadapannya akan terjamin. Anak-anaknya akan terjamin. Dengan benda kita bari, the future generation can also benefit from it. Yeah? And therefore, we then create a wealth for other people to share. Yeah? And certainly at the end of the day, the baseline is also about belief. Yeah? So you have the belief is in center. Cantik lah you punya you pun you punya punya ni. Tapi maybe you don't know what the meaning is. Yeah? So I'm giving you the meaning. The floor is about life and faith. The roof is about intellectual rigor. The dinding is about the future generation and the wealth that supports it. And then you get this beautiful house that builds sustainable community. But these four elements, when you do your project, you must think about these four elements. There's five elements. Where is these five elements? Dalam Yayasan Sejahtera, in that particular context. Why is this important? Dalam fasa apa pendidikan kebangsaan kita, perkataan ini ada. Apa saja kita buat, dia kata, we must get a balanced human being. Yeah? Atas apa? Atas belief in God. That's why kita buat, buat masuk makasihlah syariah. Yeah. Kerana apa? Kerana Malaysia citizens. Yeah. Kesudahannya dia mesti ada kesejahteraan diri ni. And we cannot translate this into any language because it is not translatable. English will call it well-being. Well-being is just one dimension. Dia ada banyak dimension. Yeah? Life, intellectual, apa ni, progeny, wealth and you go faith only ada kesejahteraan diri ini then only it can contribute to the harmony of the family the society and nation without this you cannot contribute and therefore we talk about bully we talk about sexual harassment we talk about one pom, bunuh orang lain we talk about pencurian we talk about rasuah why these are all the state of disarmament and therefore it does not contribute to the family it does not contribute to society it does not contribute to the nation and kesejahteraan does not take place kita katalah salam sejahtera tapi kusut masai yeah? masa masuk tanda sejahtera tadi masuk sejahtera keluar pening kepala ah, benda itu and that is I think what we need to understand why sejahtera is important in this particular context yeah? ada pukul berapa dah Wan? Um, habis dah? Lima minit lagi okay. So kita bercakap tentang sejahtera ini Kita nak buat macam mana Kalau di universiti Just to go this very quickly for Most of you may, may not be interested We always talk about the triple helix yeah? uh, Government, business And university Must work together To create this sejahtera That we call about Oh kita tak cukup Di mana masyarakat Oh kita tambah Kita kata quadruple helix kita tambah government, business, university and society mungkin like Yayasan Hasanah Kamsin yeah? but we just learned today or recently if the government is corrupt everything is corrupted kalau kerajaannya rasuah, semuanya rasuah industrinya rasuah, universitinya rasuah uh, NGO-nya pun kena rasuah juga. one MDB yeah? so kita mengatakan this is not the model that we want to follow The model we want to follow is what we call the quantiple helix model. Bukan empat, bukan tiga, tapi lima. Yeah. Dan dia bukan berasaskan, it is not based on structures or institutions, but it is based on values and virtues. Bersandarkan kepada nilai-nilai yang lima tadi. Life, intellectual, progeny, uh, wealth and also the faith. Yeah. And it's beyond innovation. It is about a balanced community that you want to create. Just like Yayasan Khansa, a balanced and sustainable community. But it must be based on values. Yeah? Not based on structures because structures do not sustain it. Right? So I just want to very quickly talk about the macro part and the micro part. The macro part sudah tentu. Yeah? Dari segi life, kita kata ini intellectual ni, faith. Tapi kalau kita expand kan, outside the individual, it becomes a human, the life with dignity. Yeah? 
it becomes knowledge, the intellectual manager, you must have knowledge. You must have knowledge. You cannot do this without knowledge. Kita perlu ada ilmu. Yeah? And ilmu itu penting untuk kita uh, menjelaskan sesuatu. Lineage ataupun keturunan tadi berkenaan masa hadapan, the future. Kita ada beranak, beranak pinak ni pasal apa kata kita nak menentukan masa hadapan. Ya, yeah? kadang-kadang orang beranak kata pasal apa anak, tak tahu lah pasal apa anak. Ya. Yeah? Kita nak menentukan bahawa terjamin masa hadapan kita Sebab itu kita bagi dia pendidikan Sebab itu kita bagi dia uh, pengetahuan Sebab itu kita bagi dia maruah Supaya dia boleh membentuk masa hadapan ya? Dan Masa hadapan itu bergantung kepada uh, Sudah tentu harta Tapi bukan harta sekadar kita saja We're talking about harta yang Tuhan bagi kita Angin, air, uh, tanah semua ni Amanah kepada kita Macam mana kita jaga Ini orang pantang terjawab sendiri Tuhan tanya mengapa sebelah itu uh, Air eh, sungainya macam teh tarik uh, Razali apa jawabnya? Siap Siap ha? Tak dapat PAM Itu sekali ya? uh, Razali pandai dia kata Saya dah beritahu pada one One tak kuat uh, One tak kuat One tak kena TAM uh, One kata Kami dah kerja dengan Yayasan Sejahtera Tapi dia buat tak kerti je uh, Kena pula soal lah uh, Siap ya? Ini bukan kerja main-main ini bukan kerja main-main Amanah kita kita kena pegang sampai kita mati besok ha, Kalau nak main-main saja Pergilah tempat lain, jangan di sini Ya, yeah? Because these are the things that Sudah hanya, Tuhan bercakap tentang keadilan We're talking about justice How do you dispense justice when people are poor? Ya, yeah? Macam mana kita memberi keadilan Kalau ada orang begitu banyak yang Papa kedana, daif dan sebagainya Kita bawa lah kereta kita Mesti sebesar-besarnya tapi tugas kita untuk membantu mereka belum selesai. Kalau keadilan itu tidak ada wujud. Yeah? So I will still probably stop there. Uh, okay, ini dah dah. So the microcosmos, kita mengatakan kesudahannya seluruh alam semesta ini perlu dalam perimbangan. Ini dikatakan mizan. Yeah? Tetapi mizan itu juga hidup dalam diri kita. Iaitu akal dengan kalbu. Nah, ini kalbu ni yang selalu terabai ya? Kerana kalbu ini tidak diasuh Pada kecil sampai ke besar Kadang-kadang jadi keras Orang kata hati batu ha, Itu dia Dia cakap macam mana pun keras tu. Hatinya tidak lunak Orang Islam hatinya lunak ha, Macam mana kita menjaga dan menjadikan benda ini Benda-benda yang perlu penting bagi kita Alright So if you want to look at it You have got the first level At the global level Yeah. At the global level Kita katakan The terminology change But the meaning is the same Kita saja bukan saja ada nyawa Tapi nyawa kita ada maruah Bukan nyawa macam ikan yeah. Nyawa kita ada maruah nah, Maruah ini yang perlu kita jaga yeah. Kita ada intelek Intelek kita penuh dengan ilmu Full of knowledge And we need to look for that knowledge We have got lineage We know the future Where is the future is all about Yeah? And we've got wealth But wealth is not just about us Wealth is about the community wealth yeah? The water, the resources And so on and so forth right? So if you look about the sustainable development goal The sixth study though The sustainable development goal We have the necessities And we can talk about The same thing To be sejahtera yeah? Because the sejahtera has all these elements in it And then we can talk about the five elements that I mentioned to you. Yeah? People, planet, prosperity and partnership and peace. And that peace is part and parcel of what sustainable development is all about. So I just want to draw the last diagram for you. So kalau kita katakan tadi local, yeah? kita ada global, tapi kita juga ada sustainable development dari segi. Kalau ini dia ada life, Life is dignified And that dignified make bring peace Ada nyawa Ada maruah Maruah itu yang menjadi Kedamaian, kesejahteraan baginya Kerana kita dapati Jiwanya itu tentera yeah? Kalau dia ada akal Ada ilmu Ilmu ini sudahnya akan memakmurkan orang Ilmu is not for you alone Knowledge is making other people's life Also better And that's why we have conferences like this But tidak, why do we didn't have conference? I might as well stay in my room You know, sleep and see whatever TV or whatever Itu pun I'm looking at people's elmo Yeah 
So when you have lineage, you have got apa ni, uh, the future, and you can talk about the future of the planet in general. Yeah? And wealth about resources, yeah? and the resources is about making prosperity equitable for everybody. Okay? And therefore the faith, spirituality, and partnership become part and parcel of that quadruple helix that we talked about. All right? So I think there are a few more slides, but it's not, that not, that not important. But this is what I hope. Yeah? You can link between what sustainable development is all about, what is the purpose, not only about elevating poverty, but making people happy, making people uh, pretty, uh, balanced, making people sustainable. And that's what Sajatra is all about in the five dimensions that we said this morning. So I hope I've given you some indication. There's a lot more to be said. But because time constraints, then we will come back maybe inshallah next time. Yeah? Terima kasih banyak. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Tansri. As usual, very inspiring. Okay, at least uh, we have better understanding regarding the sustainable development. So we see how ample time. According to Dr. Wan, we allow you to have about until 11 o'clock. So we have another 25 minutes for our Q&A session. So I open to pause. If you have any question, yeah. Pablo. Uh, my my former students, Dr. Azri. Okay, do you have any question? Yes, stand up your name and your organization, and you just throw up a question to Young Bahia Azri, I, oh, okay, Dr. Carol. So when we're talking about the Sajatra, uh, I will have any uh, index maybe to measure some kind of uh, the level of the Sajatra itself. So uh, that's number one. And then uh, number two, uh, we have, uh, I will have any models. I will have any specific models maybe to embed the uh, Sajatra, especially in the components of the uh, industrial revolutions for industrial revolution because we are talking uh, about the industrial revolutions and uh, machine will be replaced human, for example, and a lot of jobs will be uh, lost uh, in the future. So, uh, uh, maybe have some kind of suggestive industrial revolution. Okay, thank, thank you very much. The first question is about the index. The second question is how I are form uh, related to suggestive model. The second, I answer the second one first because it's easier. In other words, if you want to talk for any in any revolution, like for any activities, you must ask whether are they promoting life, are they promoting intellect, are they promoting lineage, are they promoting wealth, are they promoting faith? Kalau robot tu, kalau robot tu kita bu, kita buat dan kesudahannya ni menjanamkan orang, then it's not the kind of revolution that we want. It's very simple now, there's already what you call autonomous weapon, the drones, yes. yeah? you can, I can use a drone and I can kill you, then that drone is not, it's not sustainable, it's not sejahtera. Yeah? I have this robot and it, it creates disparity, the rich become richer, the poor become poorer, then that's not the revolution that we want. We took tapsiran kita on that, on that five elements. Yeah? And that is what we are using now, not to measure indices because it's difficult to measure indices. 
is measuring KPI and E is an industrial model. You can do that because you're producing something which is tangible. Botol air, boleh kita ukur. Rupanya macam ni, beratnya macam ni, kualitinya uh, macam ni, kita boleh buat. Tapi manusia, nak ukur saya dengan Dr. Razali, dia tak, tak, tak sama. Dia besar, dia handsome, dia muda. Saya kecil, kurus dan tua. Apa yang nak dibandingkan? Menanglah dia. Yeah? So, this is something that we need to get away from in terms of measurement. But what are we going to measure? If we measure in university, misalnya, okay, if I do research, alright, then what is the purpose of my research? Okay, I want to do, if I do medical research, I say, my medical research is about saving life. Alright? That is really makasit. I'm saving life. I'm promoting and saving life. Okay? Tapi we don't stop there. If you save life, fine. But does it add to intellectual rigor? Second part. We save life, but then it doesn't add to knowledge. Then it's still not fully makasit. Yeah? And then we ask, does it benefit the future? We should delineate it. Okay? Then, then we ask the other question, does it then help preserve resources? Kadang-kadang we do research, but it use more resources, just like the US I was telling you. Yeah? They use more and more resources and they become unsustainable. Some research are like that. Buat tiga, tiga tahun, lepas tu tak ada duit nak continue. Because it's so apa ni, uh, capital intensive. Then we may not think this is a sustainable. And kesudahannya, we ask, does it increase the human, the humanness of the person? So we can use this as a kind of question to ask, where are we going? But there's no indices because we are worried how to measure these indices. Suddenly we find that pulo, what is pulo and what is lapan in the context of makasit. We are not sure. So we are not working on indices at the moment in time. We are working at the connectivity of the five elements. Lagi banyak dia connect, lagi baik. Kalau dia boleh connect tiga saja daripada lima, dan mungkin tidak baik. Kalau dia mula dengan harta, dengan, ataupun dia bermula bukan dengan dengan nyawa, mungkin dia tidak begitu baik. Saya nak buat research ini kerana saya nak meng, mengumpul kekayaan. Which is part of Makassit, fine. Yeah? But that research maybe is better than the research that start untuk membantu kehidupan dan nyawa orang. Tapi orang membantu kekayaan ni juga kita, kita tanya. Okay, now you have got your 30 million from this research. How does it help to promote life? So these questions are, these are thinking that we are thinking at the moment. How does the five elements connect with one another? I mean, we take, uh, for example, I just take one example, kalau you kerja di Bacu ni, Yayasan Sejahtera. Can you connect these five elements in your work? <coughs> What is the purpose of this bacuk punya activity? Can you connect? If you can connect, then Alhamdulillah, you are going in the right direction. Yeah? If you cannot connect, then I think you must find where is the missing link and how do you connect it. For the time being. Yeah? Wow, super answer. As always mentioned by our minister, beyond the ranking, you have to answer by the answer to be sustainable. Okay. Do you have a question? Yeah, no question. Oh, no, yeah, sure. Yeah. We speak Arabic a little bit with our study. Yeah. The Paksa bertanya. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Saya merasa begitu bahagia dan sejahtera bertemu dengan dua guru saya. Saya di Islam di ASEAN Tan Sri ketika Tan Sri menjadi PC di ASEAN di tahun 2007 menjadi 2010 kemudian saya merasa bahagia bertemu balik dengan guru saya 11 tahun yang lepas saya ambil kursus etika pengurusan dengan Profesor Razali dan saya masih ingat lagi saya dipanggil ke bilik beliau kerana bertanya satu soalan yang tak sepatutnya tanya dalam kelas Tak sejahtera Satu perkara yang uh, besar dibincang uh, Tan Sri Faizat semalam ialah uh, Poverty lah 
Dan beliau berkongsi satu berita yang agak mengejutkan kita Bila separuh daripada penduduk dunia ini uh, Dikategorikan sebagai miskin juga Dengan memperoleh pendapatan sekitar RM22.00 persen sehari Jadi soalan saya Setelah begitu uh, banyak uh, program intervensi yang kita lakukan oleh banyak pihak uh, Yet half million people still struggle uh, to meet their needs Jadi menurut uh, Tamsri Di mana sila? Adakah kerana program uh, itu sendiri? Atau mungkin juga peserta program itu? Atau mungkin juga pengurusan program itu Atau mungkin definisi tentang kemiskinan itu yang yang perlu uh, kita cari lain Sebagaimana uh, Tan Sri tadi dimaklum uh, Dr. Wan semalam Tan Sri refuse untuk tukar sejahtera kepada istilah Inggeris Jadi seolah-olah Tan Sri bersetuju dengan uh, pendekatan bahawa kita perlu ada satu uh, definisi ataupun pendekatan baru Dalam kita mendepani apa dua uh, masalah yang Okay, soal kita bercakap semalam pun bila bercakap dengan Menteri Luar ya, Bila dia mengajarkan Sustainable Development Saya mengatakan bahawa kita perlu berhati-hati Kerana Sustainable Development ini Kalau mengikut definasi mereka Dia mungkin menjadi satu force Untuk menakluki minda kita balik Contoh yang dia beri cukup mudah Misalnya lah, dia mengatakan bahawa kelapa sawit tak bagus Ini di Eropah ceritanya yeah. Kenapa tak bagus? Bukan kerana dia tidak sihat Tetapi kerana kita membunuh kononnya orang hutan Mungkin kita bunuh orang hutan yeah. Tapi itu tidak ada kena-mengena dengan kelapa sawit tak bagus Dan terlalu dipulaukan pula Ya yeah. Sebenarnya kerana apa? Kerana uh, apa ni kelapa sawit itu adalah pesaing yang paling hebat dengan bahan-bahan mereka. Ah ini ini perkara-perkara yang kita perlu perlu akur. Ya? Sedangkan kita merasakan bahawa dari segi definasi sustainable development ini kita balik-balik kepada apa yang telah dihajar oleh Uh, generasi dulu Ambil contoh ya. Kalau kita pergi ke Bali Siapa orang pernah ke Bali Pasal Bali kita nampak contohnya Di Bali dia ada konsep Sustainable developmentnya Mengikut tradisinya Ini dipanggil sebagai Tri Hana uh, Tri Hita Karana ya, Bahasa dia Tri Hita Karana Tri Hita Karana ni apa Maknanya Hubungan manusia dengan manusia Hubungan, hubungan manusia dengan alam dan hubungan manusia dengan Tuhan Tuhan ni cara dia lah Bila kita pergi ke Bali, kita tengok di mana-mana Di shopping mall ke, di tepi jalan ke, di tepi pantai ke Di, di sawah padinya ke, akan ada uh, Apa tu, bahan-bahan uh, yang di uh, Kononnya diberi kepada Tuhan Ya, yeah, sebagai uh, Apa tu uh, What do you call uh, Berterima kasih lah Ya, yeah, itu ada dan dia menjaga hubungan manusia dengan manusia Dia menjaga manusia Kalau kita tengok dia punya tak, tak sawah padinya Dia panggil dia subak ya? Dia cukup tertib Kerana dia mengikut Islam begitu juga Kita juga diminta menjaga ya? Manusia dengan manusia Manusia dengan alam Manusia dengan Tuhan Tapi kita ada satu lagi Manusia dengan dirinya Kita menjaga diri kita Diri Supaya diri kita mula-mula seimbang We need to be balanced We need to be a balanced human being Sebab itu dalam fasa-fah pendidikan kebangsaan Mengatakan We want to nurture a balanced and harmonious human being That is the final uh, What you call the statement Of the fasa-fah Yang sudah hanya ada kesejahteraan diri So These are issues that I think we need to start thinking about That we don't buy Apa saja kadang-kadang Malaysia ni Apa saja yang dibuang kita ambil Perkataan modal insan misalnya. Dalam fasa-fasa pendidikan Tidak ada setelah modal insan 
Tapi menteri-menteri kita bercakap tentang Kita mesti membangunkan modal insan yang terbaik Modal insan tak pernah yang baik Pasal Definasinya sedemikian Definasi modal insan mengikut teori Human capital theory Adalah manusia yang mementingkan kedudukan Ekonominya Itu modal insan Jadi saya, bila saya datang kemari uh, Prof. Razli ajak saya Saya akan tanya berapa nak bayar Oh dia kata ini ikut kerajaan lah Tentang suri 300 jam Eh mana boleh saya profesor tau Takkan 300 ha, Dan dia berdua ok lah bagi 1,000 Eh saya tan suri tau ha, Takkan ha, naik 2,000 Eh saya baru jadi rektor ni ya. Selagi saya tak boleh pungut Dia tak kata tak susah lah kami yang bajet dan cikgu orang tak payah Cari orang lain Saya tak minat Pasal as a model, modal insan itu kerja saya Saya nak memamurkan kedudukan ekonomi saya itu saja You all faham tak faham itu you all punya pasal I come here to earn my fee And therefore I go ha, Ini yang kita utarakan bahawa modal insan, modal insan, modal insan benda je yeah? Oleh kali kita tidak faham Istilah-istilah ini Istilah ini adalah istilah daripada New, 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 new liberalisme Ya, yang mengutarakan ini sebab itu orang-orang barat datang kemari ambil saja dari punya konsultan yang datang ni baik McKinsey ke baik Ernst Young ke baik apa apa yang ni nak dia nak duit dia nak duit yang dibaginya kadang-kadang tak sampai dengan apa yang diberi bayar 23 bilion apa yang dibaginya kadang-kadang kita juga yang memberi maklumat-maklumat ini that is a human capital theory and we need to understand this as an university This is our job Tapi kita ada 20 universiti Tidak seorang pun yang membangkang tentang penggunaan modal insan ini Malah kita gunakan lagi Because we do not understand This is I think the important thing So sama juga Bila dikatakan dengan sustainable development Mengikut tarifan Brunson Dia mengatakan They don't talk about the past They talk about the future and the present Maka bagi dia there's no past tapi bila kita tanya balik soal What about the past? Ha, dan dia kelakar pun Pasal past dia 30 tahun Past kita 1,000 tahun Banyak ilmu yang kita boleh tiba Daripada 1,000 tahun Berbanding dengan 30 tahun Tapi oleh kerana dia datang daripada barat Kulitnya putih, rambutnya blonde Tinggi orangnya Namanya pun McDonald Kita pun kata ok yeah? ha, Ini dia masalah-masalah yang berlaku dalam masyarakat kita Kerana kita sendiri Jiwa kita cukup kecil yeah? Our As self esteem is so small That if it's not Mac McKinsey or Ernst and Young I know sometimes I I sit in the board of Kazana and Hasana But it must be Ernst and Young Kalau tidak tak boleh yeah? uh, Sudah tu When the Ernst and Young dapat Dia tulis apa? Copyright Ernst and Young Sedangkan semua kerjanya Kerja kita Datang-datangnya datang pada suhail lah Datangnya daripada batu Datangnya daripada suang punggur Dia compile je Lepas tu nanti tunjuk I've worked in suang punggur Dia tak mana suang punggur ni tak tahu This are I think our work You talk about sustainable development Datang maruah tadi bagi saya Saya pegang terus I will not compromise In that particular fact That's how I answer your question okay? Thank you okay. Thank you Tan Sri Kita ada 10 minit lagi okay? Exactly 8 minit Kini ada soalan, sila, sila. Uh, Dr. Nawi Kagum saya tengok Dr. Nawi Ok uh, Ada Dr. Nawi ada produk sendiri dan sebagainya Kagum okay. Assalamualaikum dan uh, Salam Jantra Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Dan uh, Prof. Razli um, <coughs> Uh, isu tentang sustainable uh, society ni saya ingat isu an global lah, antara bangsa kan dan uh, pada saya we are fellow muslim kita ada model kita contohnya uh, tasik sebut tadi ada maqasid syar'i uh, menjaga jiwa menjaga harta menjaga negara kan Uh, uh, 
menjaga alam, sungai dan sebagainya uh, Dan kita sebagai fellow muslim Kita berteraskan kepada uh, agama Konsep makosib syariah Dan uh, kalau kita lihat di Sekecilkan negara kita Malaysia ini Multi etnik dan multi religion uh, Mungkin uh, bagi uh, fellow muslim dia bercakap tentang makosib syariah Kan? Dan bagian non muslim dia tak boleh tak boleh terima makosib syariah ini secara total kerana berasaskan kepada Islam. Jadi pada pandangan uh, tasmi macam mana kan boleh dibentuk satu model gabungan antara non muslim dan muslim bagi bagi mewujud kesejahteraan dalam konteks uh, negara kita Malaysia ni. Terima kasih. Asyik. Memang ini satu bukan masalah tetapi satu perkara yang sudah kita kita selesaikan mudah-mudahan. Ya. Tapi dengan syarat ini kita tidak menggunakan bahasa Arab. Bahasa kefahaman mereka tentang bahasa Arab ini sudah diselewengkan. Ya. Bila cakap tentang syariah saja bagi mereka potong kepala potong tangan. Ya. Salahnya bukan salah kita. Dan saya berkata dengan dia Bila cakap tentang makasih itu We are talking about the promotion of life Mendukung, mengagungkan Nyawa Mustahil kita potong kepala potong tangan Ini sudah ada satu percanggahan ya. Oleh kerana mereka tidak faham bahasa Arab Oleh kerana mereka tidak faham tentang Mendalami makasih ini Jadi mereka mengambil apa yang mudah saja Kita dah duduk semeja dengan Kumpulan Suka gakai daripada suku kumpulan Budhis Dikata dalam kefahaman Buddha pun mesti menjaga uh, menjaga nyawa. Sebab itu dia kata uh, apa dia orang padri-padri dia ataupun mang dia ni uh, dia kata tak tak berkaki ayam. Pasal apa? Pasal bila dia pijak semut dia akan rasa. Dan dia tidak mahu bunuh semut itu kerana itu nyawa. Kefahamannya sedemikian ya. Intelek pun begitu juga Supo juga ya, itu Masuk ke sekolah semua belajar ya. Lepas itu Keturunan begitu juga Pasal apa dia tak mahu bunuh semut itu Pasal keturunan semut itu nanti akan terkenai Ibu semut mati Tidak ada keturunan lagi Jadi kefahamannya sama Memang saya rasa kalau kita katakan Islam itu adalah Agama yang syumul Yang universal Mesti boleh diterima oleh semua orang kalau tidak, tidak, tidak universal lah dia ya? Dan satu lagi contoh yang kita bawa Saya bekerja dengan NPC Malaysia Productivity Board a Corporation ya? Dan mereka ada masalah tentang Kefahaman productivity ini Bila kita cakap tentang productivity Apa yang kita cakap? Kita membikinkan kilang ya? Jadi saya tak terlibat dengan kilang Saya tak peduli tentang productivity ini tapi Malaysia sudah sampai satu ketika bahawa produktiviti itu mesti disebar luaskan, mesti difaham oleh semua orang. Ya, kalau orang di kilang dia membuatnya, kita yang di luar kilang ni tak peduli, tak jadi juga dia. So saya kata okey kita gunakan kefahaman kasih yang saya fahamlah. Saya pun bukan orang ada orang ada agama, saya baru baru belajar belajar daripada orang. Ya. Tapi kalau kita kata gunakan makasih. Makasih yang pertama apa? Nyawa. Nyawa ini apa? Kesihatan Kesihatan ini apa? Keselamatan Jadi kalau dia bekerja di kilang Dan kita menggunakan makasih Orang itu bukan saja dia berusaha untuk mengeluarkan barang Tetapi oleh kerana dia terpaksa menjaga nyawa Dia terpaksa menjaga kesihatan Dia mesti menjaga ke- kebajikan Dia mesti menjaga keselamatan Maknanya kilang itu mesti kilang sesempurna yang boleh dia tidak masuk dalam kilang Dia jadi minah karan Dia keluar sebab itu Dia buat benda-benda yang bukan-bukan Dia masuk dalam kilang itu Kilang itu mesti membina kehidupan dia Dan nyawa dia mesti dijaga Dan mereka mesti mendapat pendidikan Internetnya bukan saja Pasang skru ini Force Industrial Revolution ni kerjanya Ini je lah Tak payah belajar pun tak apa Tutup mata pun boleh 24 jam No Makasih kata dia mesti tahu ilmu yang dibuat ha, Kita menggunakan ini dan menghujahkan Bila saya bentang ini kepada lembaga 
ada seorang wanita bukan Islam Cina ya bila saya bertanya saya tak pakai perkataan Arab saya berkata semua perkataan-perkataan biasa yang dia boleh faham dia kata apa Tan Sri this concept is mind blowing saya tak pernah dengar konsep macam ini dalam orang memujahkan produktiviti salahnya kita orang Islam ini kita merasa cukup kecil untuk mengeluarkan prinsip kita kepada orang lain kita merasakan konsep kita ini orang lain tak boleh terima tapi salahnya saya rasa kelemahannya kita kerana kita tidak tahu macam mana meletakkannya dalam satu situasi yang orang lain boleh terima sekarang ini Alhamdulillah MPC menerima konsep produktiviti ini berasaskan makasih dan syariah dua hari sudah saya dipanggil oleh Astro berbincang tentang apa yang dikatakan tentang konsep produktiviti baru menggunakan kita panggil the five necessities kita tak kata the five makasih kita kata empat perkara yang asas Nombor yeah. kita bagi syariah dia kata ni it's only for the Muslims you know I have nothing to do with syariah pandai kita macam mana kita mengatur langkah supaya bila dia terima besok oh it is an Islamic concept baru dia terkejut yeah. dia mendapat dia mencari Islam itu kemudian kita selalu start dengan Islam dulu University Islam antara bangsa yeah. motokar Islam katanya motokar Islam tu benda jalan dia ke kiblat je tak boleh ke kanan ha, ini, ini, ke, ini kerja kita mesti ada Islam itu depannya tapi kesudahannya kita tidak boleh menerangkan di mana Islam itu letak so I think we need to change our strategy ya? kalau Islam itu syumul ini pen ni sudah tentu Islam kalau dia menulis dan menyebarkan ilmu, tak payah nak kata ini pen Islam ya kita tak payah nak kata di uh, other one Science Islam Sekarang jadi masalah besar Science Islam Christian ada science Dia tak panggil Christian Science yeah? Dia tak panggil Chinese Science Dia tak panggil Indian Science Islam dia kata Islamic Science Ini soal Apa yang kita nak bicarakan Tentang apa kita nak buat Apabila kita nak mengwar-warkan Islam Dalam konteks yang begini Sustainable Development mudah-mudahan kalau bagi saya alamat saya akan tulis kita dah tulis buku di USIM ya? pembangunan lestari berdasarkan kepada makasih syariah insyaAllah sekarang buku ini ter- 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 diterjemahkan dalam bahasa Inggeris so kerja kita lebih banyak kalau kita nak mewarwarkan apa yang kita katakan Islam dalam prinsip ini sebab itu sejahtera saya pakai sejahtera saja saya tidak mahu dia di translate kalau translate jadi benda lain kita tak boleh dapatkan dia dengan makasih dah. Nah ini benda-benda yang kita insya-Allah akan buat dan kita insya-Allah berdoa. Ya, sampai ini dapat kita lakukan sebaik yang mungkin. Mudah-mudahan. Okay, thank you very much Tan Sri. Wow, what a learning. So we are reach 11. Okay, 3 minutes after 11. So thank you very much. So give a big applause to Yang Bangga Tan Sri. Kalau tidak pernah menunjukkan Saya saya mahu ini Meminati Tan Sri bila Dr. Wan kata Prof, kalau saya ke Kostro DSO uh, Prof jadi moderator saya kata By all means, sebab Tan Sri yang berdiri setiap Dan saya selalu ikut Tan Sri di ICAP dan sebagainya Dan tak membawa masa kita serahkan kepada uh, Pemuda Syara Untuk agenda seterusnya Silakan Right, thank you very much to the keynote speaker yang berbahagia Prof. Tan Sri Datuk Zikifli Abdul Razak for the meaningful insight on sejahtera, poverty and sustainable society. Also thank you Prof. Moderator, uh, Prof. Razli for moderating this meaningful thought-provoking session. I'm sure all of you are interested in getting hold of the PowerPoint notes. Worry not, yeah? The secretary will email all of you the keynote speakers very soon, yeah? The notes. Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to invite Yang Berusaha, Associate Professor Dr. Wan Ahmad Anizal Wan Ismail, Director of Institute for Poverty Research and Management, UMK, accompanied by Yang Berusaha, Dr. Nurhan and Abdul Rahman, Director of ICOP 2018, to present a token of appreciation to our keynote speaker and moderator. <laughs> Honorable keynote speaker, moderator and fellow directors, kindly remain on stage for photography session right after this, yeah?
Thank you so much. Thank you once again for the fruitful keto sharing session. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the floor, I would like to invite all of you to join us for a group photo session. On the stage? Oh, right, right here. Yeah. That's joining us. Come forward. Okay, boleh sebut sejahtera, 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 sejahtera. Okay. Tahu tahu, yummy yummy. Okay. Sebab sebab. 
Okay, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you have come to an end for our keynote speaker session today. We'll have a short break, about 30 minutes, and we'll come back to the parallel session at the respective rooms. Kindly refer to the program book. Let me see what time is it now. We'll, we'll resume. We'll resume for our parallel session around 11:30 a.m. Yeah. Light refreshment is served at the foyer. Calling for ashrets. Ashrets, please usher VIP to the refreshment area. Thank you so much. Additional announcement to all ICOPS 2018 participants. There will be a city tour tomorrow morning. If you are interested in joining us, please gather around the GRB lobby area around 8.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. Ya, kita ada lawatan, lawatan sekitar Kota Baru uh, Esok pagi, bermula esok pagi Bagi peserta-peserta yang berminat Anda boleh berkumpul di ruang Lega Lobby Pukul 8.30 pagi esok Terima kasih Thank <laughs> you. 